Hello, everybody. Ella J here on behalf of WrestleZone. And today I am joined by La Creme de la Creme. I don't have the best accent Ooh. for it. I'm so sorry. Ashley Damboise. So how are Perfect. you today? <laughs> I'm doing great. Even better because you've perfected my name. I love it. Thank I you. have. I'm still not the best on La Creme de la Creme. I'm not I'm not the best at that French Canadian aspect. It's but fine. you know, it works. Yeah. Ashley, how are you today? I'm fabulous today. Chilling. My new spot. First inter second interview in my first new in my new spot. So I know you <laughs> just had a not a I wouldn't say a big move, but obviously you're closer to the nightmare factory now, which we'll talk about in a bit. But Ashley, you've had a certainly great start to your 2023 year and you closed out 2022 pretty strong as well, which we'll get to in a bit. But I wanted to point out an interesting stat. You actually doubled the amount of matches you had in 2022 compared to 2021. Granted, you didn't make your debut till like April of 2021. So like four months of whatever, but like that's yeah huge so as you now kind of approach the second anniversary of your debut how do you feel about the work and the progress that you've put in so far I wouldn't change a thing I literally I put myself out there I was open to trying new things new promotions coming back to the same promotions doing different things building storylines not building story. I don't, just literally I wanted to to work with as many people as possible um and I ended up finding like a little group of women that I ended up kind of finding in the same locker rooms as I went. And the beautiful thing, looking back, I was reflecting on this the other day um, in the last year of diving into doing the wrestling in, in like, uh, as you know, my first few matches were TV matches for yeah. AEW. So that was my experience. It was capped. It was three to five minutes. Um, you don't get much offense. You, you, you sell for them. You make them look good when it came time to like, no, you need to put yourself over and like, mm -hmm. you need to show your strength and your power and don't let this person do this to you or without this. And I, it didn't make sense to me. So being able to come into my power a little bit more as a wrestler was one of the biggest things that I want to note for myself of my progress in 2022. And then the women, <laughs> he's curious, the women that I met and made friends with along the way, like just even if I don't see them unless I'm in the next locker room, that connection and the lessons that we teach each other just by working with each other are, are things I couldn't learn in training. So like uh, just teachers along the way that aren't actually teachers, but just being there for each other makes such a difference in the development. Yeah, you've been surrounded with some of the best, obviously, at the Nightmare Factory. You had a really big, like, pressure situation. Granted, like you said, it was only three to five, like, minutes in your first couple of matches. Maybe that is one of the challenging, but you're still kind of in this green stage of professional wrestling, probably trying to navigate your way around. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges that you faced so, so far? Obviously, adjusting to more time and getting your, what's it called, like, resiliency in is another one that you've probably focused on, but what are some of the other challenges that you've faced so far? Like, what isn't a challenge? Um, I feel that. <laughs> every single with day. With anything new, yeah. Comes with another challenge. I will say notably was uh, learning how to switch gears in the moment when when necessary. And I have not mastered that at all yet. But the women that I've been blessed to work with in the middle of, a, let's say I'm out there and they're like, oh, we don't care whose face, whose heel, go. And then we're back there and I'm like, I'm green as shit. Can I please be? The face this was like earlier on a little bit I mean I still feel like some, some days you wake up you're like do I know how to do this anymore wait a minute like but I was I was face she was heel and then it in the middle of of going through it I realized they were booing me because I was going hard on my French gimmick or for whatever reason I don't know why they're booing. they were booing me and the things I was saying back and then cheering her so she was like all right we're gonna switch it and I was turn like, kind of midway wow okay and then av after that I was heel every time I got brought back and my biggest thing was like oh shit how how do I do that because yeah. they're usually leading the match they're usually keeping the railroad on the tracks and if it goes off you look there one of you has to be more so of a leader the other one has to be a listener and both are equally as important 
So learning how to switch gears from being like, I can listen real well to like, okay, decision time, we're doing this is one of the biggest challenges I'm still chewing on. Yeah. And you've racked up, like we said, you doubled your count in 2022, which is really something to be proud of. And we do what's called a watch list feature here on WrestleZone. So kind of over the last year or so, is there a particular match or moment of yours that you feel stands out to you or one that you feel, or one that you feel really proud of and why? Um, they're all so there. It's all a blur, um, of the last 2022. Yeah. Even in just the last freaking month, my lady, you've had like so many oh, cool things going easy. on. <laughs> my match with Diana was probably the most significant, like symbolic match I could express because we started at Team Adams. Adams. Mm-hmm. She was the first female wrestler. And then the first to uh, on his team, and then the first to get signed by WWE, and then became how many times champion for Impact Wrestling, and every uh, every step along the way when I was training there, I was with him for a solid six months before I made the move to Georgia, and every time we would think about, or, or every time it would an opportunity would arise where he'd be like, "Yeah, if you do this well." Then I'll show Deanna and then we can set up a match between you and Deanna. Like she was like the carrot being dangled in front of my yeah. development. Like, if you do this well, I'll talk to Deanna. And it was like, oh, shit, I can't, uh, like, you know, it's like uh, nerve wracking. But then also you want to make your coach proud. You want to get to a level where he thinks you're good enough to wrestle like one of his top girls. So when that graphic came out, that's when I found out. <laughs> I, was so, from- I was so excited for you. I saw that. I was like, that's my girls. Cause I got Deanna right over here. Like that's uh, two of my favorites right there. I was so happy to see that. Hell yeah. You, yes, it was it, just the full circle moment of being like, Beat it. I'm good enough to wrestle Deanna. <laughs> yeah. And, and you made your impact wrestling debut in the process. So obviously you're facing Deanna. Oh, oh my gosh. This is just, I love cat cameos. I am all here for it. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I think she's locked in my hair. Ooh, stab in the back. Right. Better buy your cat than, you know, I'll somebody take it. else. Yeah. yeah. But obviously you made your Impact Wrestling debut in January. That was just a few weeks ago. Obviously you faced former Knockouts champion and Team Adams graduate Deanna Prazo. But like, how was that experience for you overall in Impact and obviously working with Deanna? It was, obviously I came in there with my own nerves. Of course. You know, if you're not nervous, you, you don't care enough, I'm kidding. But uh, <laughs> I was just... excited like coming I wanted to come in there and I wanted to just take it all in and absorb it all and see like where she's this is her home like I want to see like where she's been like how the locker room is every locker room is different and I have to tell you like I've I felt so welcomed I felt so comfortable I mean just chilling like in the women's locker room everyone takes up their little spot like usual and everyone respected each other's space each other's things and like everyone that I walked up to to say hello to they were like oh hi nice to meet you blah, blah. like it was just or like see you again because I've seen a lot of these women outside and like Taylor Wilde was in Canada when I had my my second match in, in Canada yeah. my first four-way match was when mm. she was in it <laughs> and that was wild but eh, wild. But yeah, so it just, it was, it was a fun experience. Uh, I learned a lot. I got to have a, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. <laughs> hmm. I got to have an extra match that was extra, extra dark. Okay. That no one else will ever see. I didn't say anything bad, right? No. <laughs> No, yeah. I mean, we're that's another opportunity for you. That's not a bad thing. Like we said, you have really been kicking off this year strong and you've you've sort of settled into 2023 now. We'll get into some of the other opportunities right after this, but as we're now into about February now at this point, do yeah. you have any personal or professional goals that you are yearning to accomplish this year? I want to get signed. 
I want to get signed. I want to wrestle full time, train full time, be in the gym full time. I don't, I don't know. That's that's everything I do. Every goal that I have is for that ultimate goal. And obviously you have had experiences just in the last month alone, might I say. You've had NWA, of course, Impact and WWE, of course. Basically, you got to incorporate one of your skills into your appearance on SmackDown during the Miracle on 34th Street fight where you appeared as a ballerina as, of course, you have like a decade worth of experience in dance. So can you tell us more about that experience and how you felt appearing on screen? Came out of the box. We saw that. I was like, I know that girl. Let's go, <laughs> Ashley. That was one of the most incredible moments of my life. Talking about another full circle. There's like a theme happening around the, the initiation of 2023 with, with full circle moments. There was the Diana full circle moment. But before that was one that was a full circle moment for my life. Everyone grows up with a dream. And a lot of people's dream when they were very little was to become a professional wrestler. My dream was to become, my first dream ever was to become a professional dancer. Sir. That's where my dance background comes from. I started at the age of two and I stopped at the age of 28. So I've got a lot of ballet background because I started with tap jazz, ballet, little combo classes. And um, I worked so hard and I tried everything I could to become that ballerina, to have that um to stand to hold a candle to the name that I bear Jacques D'Amboise was the first male principal ballet dancer for the New York City Ballet and I just I never felt like I looked the part enough I went through a lot trying to like get as skinny as possible to show I was serious enough about the career path I was choosing um I I don't know if you noticed I'm very big on the bottom half and that never goes away no matter how low my body fat percentage is for ballet for ballet. I'm naturally very muscular. It's, it wasn't, I never, I didn't get picked for certain things that I always went out for. So I had to switch gears. I went into other genres of dance that fed my soul through college, through my professional career as a dancer in New York city. And then my, and then I kind of like, when I stopped dancing, I didn't know where, where I was going to, like, I've never not had a dream before or a big goal, big passion. So I was just like, okay, going along with this fitness thing. I was doing fitness retreats, yoga retreats. Those were big things in my life. Very passionate about sound healing, which will come out in an interview somewhere sometime. But um, when I had wrestling presented to me as an opportunity and I got in the ring, it was like, this is it. This is my new dream. This is my passion. This is my drive to go forward in a new trajectory. I had a goal, I had a purpose again. So, and that's what I've been chasing since that first moment I stepped in the ring and did a, a, a front roll, you know? So to be able to not only fulfill my childhood dream of being a professional dancer on a huge stage, being recognized worldwide, to do it on my childhood dream, on the platform of my adulthood dream, I had to like, go to the locker room and, and have a little little moment to myself because um when I was pulled aside they were like okay uh we read your resume and you're a dancer right like you're an actual ballet dancer and I was like yes that's yes. my yes. resume is correct that is not a lie <laughs> yes like, great would you mind they made it the way it was presented to me was like, like would you mind doing us a favor and, and, and being a ballerina would I oh my god I was like Gladly. No problem. Not a problem. I can do that for you. <laughs> Dying inside. But yeah, so it was a, a dream within a dream on TV. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of fully encapsulated. Obviously, you didn't get to wrestle in that appearance, but you were still backstage surrounded by a lot of producers and seasoned veterans and stuff like that. So I'm curious, were you able, maybe you were just folk fixated on what you were going to do that night, but I believe that was actually a double taping night. So you had some time, was that the double taping night? Yeah. So you had yeah. about two hours before that to kind of get your <laughs> stuff together. Were you able to maybe like pick anyone's brain for advice? And if so, who was it and what did they teach you 
I, when I, that night was, uh, apparently that part was added in there last minute. Oh, there was okay. a lot of moving parts happening all the time. So I was, I stayed out of the way. That night, all I worried about was what they wanted me to do because I got a little bit of information every so often of what it actually was that I yeah. was going to do. Um, fun fact is they put that whole costume together on the fly. They had runners going out, getting me, what do you need for ballet stuff? I was like, well, I need shoes, uh, tights. And they, they had a corset already. They had like a tutu setup thing, but it wasn't like a full tutu. There was no bottom. And um, oh. Triple H came up to me and he was like, are you my ballerina? And I was like, yes, sir, I am. And he goes, okay, what do you need? You have everything you need? And I was so embarrassed to say it, but I had to, I had, he, I, it, it dawned on me. And then he walked up to me and I was like, I don't have pants to wear. There's no bottom on this tutu. <laughs> and he was like, oh, that's a problem. Okay, hold on. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I had everything, but nothing underneath. I was like, can't go out like this. So no. we fixed everything. So it was more like just being where I needed to be in one. And it was so cool. I got to get my hair and makeup done. It sewn into a corset. It, it was so fun. Such a great experience for you. And I feel like not even two years and you've really been on an accelerated path with some big opportunities, obviously, like we mentioned, AEW too, you've had a plethora of those. So with all of these big opportunities kind of so early in your career, do you kind of feel any pressure or how do you personally approach these opportunities that you've been granted? I fully take things on in a sense of manifestation and doing that with a, a vibration of feeling. You're not going to create anything by thinking about it. You have to feel what it is to be there. So I don't know if I would have had such a fast track if I didn't get thrown into the situation of feeling what it is to be at where I want, like at my I know that when you get signed, it's just the beginning. It's not your end goal by any means, but there's like levels to end goals. So my first end goal is like get a company to want to invest in me enough to give me a contract. So I felt that environment. I got to feel what it would be like in a, in a, in a part of my life where I had no idea anything about the wrestling industry. So I started off with that clean feeling of this is what it's like to be here. And these are the people that you're surrounded by. So that when I was released into the wild of the independent scene, you know, I held that inside me, knowing that th this is a step towards my ultimate goal for now. And that's, uh, I forget where the question was because now I'm rambling, but just how do you approach so these op big opportunities? And like, did you feel pressure? You've had so many of them now. It's probably like kind of used to it. It's kind of a good problem to have. <laughs> I've always, I, I love pressure like that. Yeah. Like with dance, I love being in front of a crowd and I, uh, I have that same response to it every time when it comes to like, there's a, uh, don't mess up. Like my choreographers down my throat, changing things last minute. Oh, before you go out, change that last eight counts. What we did in April, not May. Okay. Thanks. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So like, but then it just, it just comes out in a sense. You have to let go and just be a channel for what needs to be done in the moment. And you've mentioned before, kind of a quote you tried to abide by, and that's don't block your blessings, which you've been blessed with a lot in the last year. So can you tell us about some of the personal or professional blessings that you're grateful for right now? Oh my God. Um, the trust that people have in me when it comes to booking me for matches, the trust that I, I feel like trust is like a huge theme. The, the I'm super grateful for the routine, the discipline that was instilled in me from the start. So this all has to go back to Damien Adams. The regiment that he puts in, the mindset that he puts in, not forgetting where you're going and telling me from the jump, like, what, like, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This could happen. This could happen. And just so I'm pre as prepared as you can be going out kind of not by yourself, but like whatever you do, you're by yourself no matter what. So doubling down on, on what I feel is right for me in every moment 
even if maybe it ultimately wasn't the best choice, it's always a lesson. So grateful for the trust that people have in me to take those risks and follow my alignment, what I feel like is the right thing for me to do. And then super grateful that most of the time it, it comes out all right. <laughs> it does. You've been you've been really successful so far, I would say. In one place I would consider a blessing for you would have to be the Nightmare Factory, which you've been training out of for a while under the like oh my God, yeah. Billy Gunn, QT Marshall, and of course, Cody Rhodes, <laughs> who we just saw win the 2023 Men's Royal Rumble. He will go on to WrestleMania to face Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. So... What is it like? I've seen I've seen your Instagram story. What is it like seeing one of your coaches kind of soar to new heights in real time? And what is your take on that match in that moment for him? It is so surreal. And I literally was in training yesterday talking to the talking about this to people where it's like, oh yeah, so um we just saw Cody on Monday or whatever <laughs> day we were at training, and then like skip forward a few days, he's in a royal rumble coming out number 30 mm -hmm. and i don't just like when i watched the clip that you posted on instagram when you got to ask him a question how, how was that being in that room that was your first time yeah that doing... was that was daunting and i the thing is is i was just asked hey do you want to have, have a question for cody <laughs> and i was like sure so you talk about pressure and i was like i got the first like question to cody so i was you know it, it it was something it was cool i was so happy for cody i didn't mean to make him emotional i felt bad about that you know <laughs> i made him cry um but it was such an emotional like fueled moment you know that's the best when you can i i was oh god when i started hearing his answer i was like ella j would get this from him <laughs> yes you're the best mm -hmm. like seeing seeing him talk about his journey and and like the, the whole thing and even what did he say how he thought he was going to be the next royal rumble winner yeah. he's like yeah next year he goes 10 years later here we are and he he, he has that now but it took all that work yeah. and his quote is do the work at the end of every training camp, all the kids get together, they put their hands in, they go, do the work, or they, they all have their own thing yeah. that they say, but like, I feel like do the work is instilled first before they can create their own. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I know that everyone leaves there with that that line in their head. Uh, two, two people from the beginners camp actually got that tattooed on their leg. Oh, wow. Fun fact. That was interesting. But seeing Cody talk about it and, and just like, living his passion through his stories it I literally started tearing up watching that so to be able to have that plus the passion that Billy Gunn and QT Marshall bring into training every single week in between their AEW schedule flying out coming back flying out QT will literally go on Wednesday night and then we have training Mondays and Thursdays he'll come back from Dynamite Thursday morning give us train us on Thursday and then sometimes fly right back out for Rampage on Friday and like you just you don't do that if you don't have this like undying passion, passion. for what you do mm -hmm. and like I was scared as hell Billy Gunn for a good amount of time when it was in training it was like yes or no sir you know until like he's he kind of like I started to get underneath the words that he was saying and you could see like in his eyes he's just like he just like wants you to get it mm -hmm. and the way he talks to me as a coach it, uh he really switched something that I hadn't experienced in terms of like my confidence giving heat or being a heel. The way that he can talk down, like he'll say it himself. He's like, I, I talk a lot. I know I, I go on and on, but like, it's just like the passion won't stop you from talking. And, but it's that type of coaching and the details that he's throwing in there that some people might think are okay. You know, I get it. I am maybe more dense than others. So I need the I need that. And it it in his passion instilled a fire in me to be able to do that in the ring. So like I can't that a one hundred percent blessing is being able to train every single week with these three people. Like a Cody less often now I know he's he's back. So everyone else can enjoy him now and we'll see him when we see him. <laughs> but 
yeah, Cody is soaring to new heights now, but you've oh. also been soaring some new heights yourself. You like to keep yourself very well-rounded. You mentioned, obviously, you have experiences in dance, bodybuilding, hiking, yoga, wrestling, and Spartan races. So, <sighs> so I first of all, I don't really know what they are, but I was... I kind of looked it up but i wanted to hear it more from yourself can you explain what spartan races are and more about your involvement in them yes (laughs) you look ashamed because i when i want to do something yeah i'm doing it okay and i had the right circumstances of like a team put together okay and i should have read the writing on the wall but when i say i'm going to do something i just i do it so I said I was going to do the Spartan race because I had two other coworkers at the gym I work at who were going to do it with me. We're training every week. We have a set protocol that we're doing to like get us prepared for like doing outdoor trail runs, um, doing calisthenics and weird movements on like steep inclines, declines, things to like get us prepared for South Carolina, no North Carolina, and I didn't <laughs> the. My manager was one of the guys on the team. He completely severed his Achilles tendon oh. at a wedding, completely separate. Oh my from God. This. Okay. And so he had had to drop out of the Spartan race. So it was me and this other guy from my gym. And we're like, all right, we're doing this. And I was like, okay, I have a wrestling match in Chicago the night before. I'll fly in on the first flight in and then we'll he'll pick me up from the airport and then we'll go straight in check in get ready to go there was an issue with the flight that was booked because the promoter sent me back to atlanta but i i caught it like two days before i went out so he had to get another flight last minute because i had receipts i said i gotta fly here afterwards so he fixed it and i but the, the flights were limited so i got one hour of sleep Flew into the Carolinas, got picked up, went straight to the Spartan race, had a 13 mile run <laughs> through shit. And I I was feeling like deliriously good. I took pre-workout and I was ready to go, had my little water satchel thing or camelback thing. Yeah. And it so it's 13 miles of um hills, mud, water. There were some obstacles I think I saw in some photos or something obstacles that I didn't realize like grip strength is super important if you're doing one bring gloves there was a guy there with gloves but no shoes I don't get it but I had both on and uh nails are not recommended because when you're grabbing rocks and stuff you need your fingers to grip and my nails were preventing that so there was like two obstacles I really couldn't do and there's like a penalty lap you have to do to like get through it after three miles of mud, water, up, down, the the we were going down a steep hill, and I started to like look out at the this, it was so beautiful out there. I was like, oh my God, look at where we're running. I twisted my ankle. I rolled my ankle so bad that we had to walk for like like 10 minutes. And I was like, man, I keep going. You know, I just listened to all the David Goggins audiobooks. I'm like rare to go, like. You don't need legs. Keep going. Goggins ran for military training with two broken legs, literally. So I was like, if he can run on two broken legs, I can run with a rolled ankle. The next thing we hit was ice water, like a freezing creek that we had to like sludge through. It was like like a lake and it numbed my ankle. So I felt great. I was like, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this. Got out of the freezing cold and it's like 39 degrees. And you're, um, everything's just cold and but we're moving. And I didn't feel any pain there. So I told my partner, I was like, let's run. So we're running. Long story short, by the end of this, I ended up straining my left hamstring all the way down the backside of my leg so bad because I rolled my right ankle and I was compensating. The next time I had training, I did two hours of leg day in the gym. And then I got invited to do a private training one-on-one. I did two hours of that. And then right after that, we had our regular Nightmare Factory Advanced Class training. So I did that. So five hours of wrestling, two hours of leg day. By the end of the night, my leg couldn't straighten. Like my my foot, I couldn't I couldn't flex my foot. So I was like on my toe and my knee yeah. wouldn't extend. So I ended up 
pulling my calf and I didn't know what it was. I thought it was my hamstring, which like blessed that it wasn't my hamstring. Yeah. Um, so I ended up getting a, a calf injury where it was just like, I didn't really know what it was, but I, I I'm not going to stop wrestling. So I kept all as many bookings as I could. And I ended up pulling it three more times after that, just thinking I was like, okay, to like push through and then learning, no, you're not sit your ass back down. So over Christmas break, I got to have a full like two weeks of no activity and just doing ice and heat therapy on it. And then my cryotherapy killed it um, or kept me from dying. <laughs> and now I am back up and running 100%. I listen to my body now and I learned a lesson. You know what's funny <laughs> is my next question literally was about cryotherapy. So thank you for this miraculous <laughs> transition <laughs> obviously you you kind of like you you want to keep yourself well-rounded you need to take care of yourself both physically and mentally obviously like imagine i i don't know what would happen if like that water wasn't there for your ankle i don't know if it would have been worse or like or like what but <clears throat> you've been taking on some cryotherapy recently so can you tell us more about some of the benefits of cryotherapy and your experience so far because you seem to be i don't know if you're sponsored by it but you you've been making waves with it so right before I realized that I pulled my calf, I got reached, I was reached out to on Instagram by the Icebox Peachtree Corners yes. here in Georgia. Shout out, shameless plug. They saved my life because they, they were like, Hey, we came across your Instagram. You are just the type of person that we would like to yeah. help promote our business. They're all individually owned. And I was like, yeah, definitely. So I took, I made an appointment for them, um, on Wednesday and but after Monday, when I had that training at five hours of wrestling, da, 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 after that Monday, I was like, I can't leave my house. Like, I can't walk right now. I'm going to cancel that appointment. And then I was like, this is an appointment I should go to. Yes. Yes, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it was just like in so much pain. I like wasn't thinking clearly, but I was like, I'm going to make it there. I walk in. I'm like, hey guys, I know you saw that I'm really athletic, but I'm broken right now. I'm broken. Like, really, can't even walk. So they absorbed me like, oh my goodness. They, I did 10 sessions in a, like 10 days in a row. They gave me um, their spot treatment that's available where it's like a hose that freezes individual or like specific areas. So like they got just on my calf with it after I did the full body freeze. So what it does, it, there's so many outside of the physiological effects, it has mental effects. Like it helps with ants, insomnia, anxiety, depression, it helps with regulating hormones. It helps with inflammation. And then afterwards, if you do the freeze and squeeze, I always do that combo whenever I have the time. It There's like boots that they'll put on your legs that help it lymphatic flow through your body. It also just feels like a good massage on your legs, just pulling the blood up to your heart and then recycling it back down. Um, it literally changed my recovery game because it helps with regulating things and decreasing inflammation. I wish I had my pamphlet out in front of me. I, there's there's yeah. so many things that there, like that cryotherapy. A lot of things. science terms, yeah. Science things. Yeah. <laughs> It'll feel better. Energizing. Oh my goodness. I'll go in there and I'll leave like whoop. I don't know if it's because the cold effect, but like yeah. you're the rest of my day, I'm like, I don't need Starbucks. Let's go. <laughs> that's your that's your caffeine, the cold. Yeah. Cold is your caffeine. not expensive. It's like 20 something dollars per session. And then Almost they gave me a discount code for my people mm -hmm. and it's like 20% off link in my bio if you live in Georgia. But, uh, yeah, it, it, they let me go whenever I want. And I post, I blow them up. <laughs> you do, you do. And kind of wanting to close things out. You are one who likes to get out of your bubble and travel. So I want to know about your trip to Serbia and what you did there. My cat's name is Serbian in Serbian, Calibri, when we talked about that before. Yes. Um, my trip to Serbia was... And when was this? This was in February 2018. Okay. Yes. Yep, because it was their Christmas. Is Or oh, or was it January? Oh, I think it was January or something. January or February. And 2018... I bartended in the Lower East Side with a bar full of, uh, when I lived in Manhattan, yeah. with a bar full of Serbians. And it was so, like, I had never met 
anyone from Serbia until I worked at this bar. And then um, one of the girls there was like, oh, I'm going to go home. I'm going to hang out with my brother. I'm going to do Christmas there with my family for the first time in years because now she's able to travel on her yeah. student visa or something like that. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Um, and she goes, I was like, I would love to travel to Serbia because I'm obsessed with learning about different cultures, emerging myself. I, it started as a conversation because I had them teaching me Serbian when we were working and it was so cool. So I told my mom, I'm like, I'm going to go to Serbia after Christmas. And mom's like, Siberia. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so I did go for a few days and they set me up with my own Airbnb in like the downtown city of Novi Sad. And Novi Sad is so beautiful. And everyone there, like the culture in general is is so based around like community and family and connecting with people and going out and oh I'll grab a co coffee with my friends and like relax and enjoy life and it was such a stark contrast because one of my friends wasn't able to travel to Serbia to see his family for Christmas because he was on like a time I don't know how the government works with that yeah. but he like wasn't able to go home for Christmas so like I actually brought stuff from America there and then brought stuff back uh Rakia is a drink that was like like in Italy there's grappa in Serbia there's Rakia and there is like all different flavors but it's like homemade moonshine in a sense it's so strong it's so fun <laughs> I got taken out to this nightclub where it was like live music and DJs and we had a table we had like rock star lifestyle because they the the currency was different so there was a lot of people that i was set up with that work in america and come back with american money and live like kings essentially because mm -hmm. everything is so much cheaper if you convert yeah. the american dollar i forget what the currency is called but we had like bottles and just it, it was so fun and the the contrast i was talking about before is that like in new york all my Serbian friends are so like out of their element because there's no time for friends. There's no time to grab a yeah. coffee. You're working, you're working, you're working, you're working. Um, sometimes you can, but when you're free, your friend's not free because they're yeah. working. So in, in, in Serbia, it's a lot more chill atmosphere. Then on the other end of the spectrum, there was like fascist American uh, graffiti on everything. And I got to learn some, I, I'm not like very well versed, uh, embarrassingly uh with the world events like that like I don't know what what is true that was taught in my history class versus what yeah. they experienced I heard some really interesting stories about like um how America tried to create peace between Serbia and Albania and ended up creating more of a problem and I, I learned what our real image was over there and it was like I'm just not gonna I'm just gonna say I'm Canadian <laughs> we're just gonna go with that yeah so it was interesting for sure. A lot of lessons learned and history learned, real history learned. And obviously I believe your, one of your goals was to make it to Australia this year. I believe the last time that me and you had talked like almost a year ago. So hopefully that gets to come true for you. That's one of the places I want to go. I like to travel. I don't get to do it often, but Ashley, Thank you so much for joining me here today. Before we let you go, can you please share where the people can find you on your social media? Absolutely. You can find me on Instagram at Ashley Damboise, one word, no apostrophes. And then on Twitter, it's at Ashley underscore Damboise. So Pretty much simple. Oh, did they really? <laughs> I can't do it without the underscore. Really? Mm -hmm. That's such a unique name. That's Well, there's another one in Canada. Oh, okay. Not I mean, it, it's it's a French Canadian <laughs> name. So like, yes. okay, makes sense. Makes sense. But <laughs> Ashley, thank you so much for joining me here today. It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure as always. Thanks. Thanks.